I have to say that education is a place where I totally feel comfortable, but I totally think needs a makeover. Mm. <laughs> so, so <laughs> what do you think, ambush, Ollie? Ambush do you think it's, Do you think we should be incremental in change, or should we just blow it up and fix it? I feel like blow it up and fix it. I mean, COVID yeah. really did that for us in a Thank lot of you. ways, but it Thank also you. exposed some gaps that we were like – oh my gosh, people don't know where to go for to teach online. Like they don't know what a learning management system is. They don't know where to go no. for training. No, they have no clue. And that was the thing that we could tell instantly when everybody said, you're not coming to campus. We knew which organizations had thought about this and were actually where they needed to be. So if you've watched the channel, you've seen Miko on here. He put the University of North Carolina at Pembroke online in 10 days. And there were other incredible stories like that that took place. And what I said all along was, if you're an instructional designer, nothing happened when COVID came along. There was nothing new for you. You already were doing this. It was a matter of scale. It was a matter of organiz organizational commitment to change and to doing what you needed to do. So then you had this, at least in my perception of an observation. You had two schools of this. One is try to replicate the classroom, you know, Zoom to room or room to Zoom or however you want to look at it. And so that are there is the approach of, okay, distance learning is about me just doing what I always do, but I put it on a TV or on a laptop. And then there's the other school of thought, which I think most designers sit in, which is, okay, let's make the most of this opportunity in terms of how we can make this instruction powerful, how we can assure that we get mastery and we get evaluations at the levels we need to create community, provide engagement, do all the things that instructional designers do constantly, but now do it in a medium most people aren't used to. So we still have the old school. We still have the new school. It's the old school with Zoom or some equivalent product, and it's a new school of, okay, let's change this paradigm to actually designing for this environment. So when most of your learners have smartphones, why aren't you using smartphones? If most of them are on Instagram or TikTok, why aren't you using that in instruction? Even though there's the argument that they don't want to use that for formal things, is that their social network. But that argument aside, it's the old notion of people don't want cell phones to go off in the classroom. And that never bothered me a bit. Uh, you know, people are people. This is their lives. If, if they're trying to work in school and go into college or whatever they're doing, taking a course, they have another life that's still sitting there and it doesn't go away. And if they need to communicate with someone or they got kids at home or anything that's going on or cause you to communicate, why in the heck would you try to limit that unless it's disruptive? And it's just all these kind of mindsets, Holly and Denise, that I think need to change among the mass of people doing this work is let's make this a community where everybody is whole, where everybody brings the best of what they've got. And we provide them a foundation and community and a way to get to their goals and not try to fork fit people into higher education or whatever it is we're doing, because that's the old model.